Today we're going to completely do a front porch makeover using our Cricut. We're going to be making some really big and fun projects so you guys don't want to miss it. Hi, I'm Crystal with Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the notification bell down below as well as the subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of our crafting tutorials. For our very first project, we are gonna be creating this door hanger right here. And so we need to paint our wood round white. So the basic things that you're gonna need for this project is gonna be a wood round. I'll have everything linked down below. You can usually find these locally at your craft stores. And if not, we have you guys covered and linked to Amazon. Next up, you guys are gonna need some adhesive vinyl as well as transfer tape. If you wanna add a bow, you can, or you don't have to. You may want some string, uh, maybe a staple gun or something like that to add the string to the back to hang it on your door. I have a couple pieces of parchment paper down here. You could just use craft paper, an old tablecloth if you wanted to, just to protect our surface. For the paint, you guys know if you've been following me for a little while, I love chalk paint. And right now my favorite is this Waverly from Walmart. You can grab these guys for a little over a dollar. So like $1.25, $1.50, I cannot remember the exact numbers, but you guys can definitely snag these locally. But like I said, I'll have some link down below. Love it, it's one of my favorites. I'm gonna go ahead and shake this up and then I'm also gonna have a foam brush we're gonna paint this guy set it aside to dry and then we'll move on to the second project so I'm gonna go ahead and take that chalk paint and just completely paint the entire thing uh, just depending it may take one or two coats most of the time I can get away with one coat so I'm just gonna go ahead and start from one end to the next get a little bit of that paint down a little bit I mean <laughs> a lot I went a little too overboard there so I'm just gonna move this around so step one, it honestly um, does not take a whole lot, like I said, just kind of going over this. I love chalk paint because it dries really fast compared to acrylic paint. But if you love acrylic paint or maybe spray paint, um, use your favorite paint, whatever choice is your favorite. So we're gonna go ahead and paint over this guy, let it sit aside to dry, and then we're gonna move on to project number two because it's also gonna include paint. Now that I have this completely painted, I'm gonna set it out of the way and prep up for a second project. Next project, let's go ahead and do the doormat. So this first one is working on our door hanger or wreath, if you will. The second one here is gonna be working on our doormat. The design that we're gonna be using today is this one right here, Hello Summer. Now you definitely could keep this all one color like this. So you could just simply weld everything and do it all in one color, which technically it doesn't matter whether you weld it or not. I still cut it out in the same. So feel free to do this all in black. One of the really cool things that you can use for something like this is flex sill so if you guys have not seen that video definitely make sure you check it out i love to use flex sill when i'm going to be doing one solid piece with just black and it will outlast acrylic paint and all of the things now today i am using chalk paint because this is going under an awning if you will you know the front porch the piece that goes over and covers this has zero access to rain so i'm not concerned about it at all i could also seal this with like a krylon clear coat or something like that now if you are going to have this out in the rain i highly recommend using an acrylic paint that is waterproof or get yourself some of the flex seal spray paint and you guys are going to love it it's in a can if you will you could also get it in the can where you can dab it on with your paintbrush we've done a couple different ways so make sure once again you check that out but today i've actually cut it out in two different pieces so i could make it bigger i wanted it wider not necessarily longer because you guys know with the cricut explorer 3 and the maker 3 you guys can actually use their smart materials which will go a long ways but it's still only going to cut like 12 inches or a little less than 12 inches so i wanted the width to be a little bit or the height if you will to be a little bit bigger so what i did was i just separated it um this comes in two separate parts anyways the hello and the summer so i did that and that way i could size it out and get it where i want so what i'm going to do i've already weeded this out so whenever you guys are working with a stencil this is considered a stencil if you guys are new with a die cutting machine this is going to be the stencil where you're going to remove the pieces that you would normally keep so i'm not going to use a piece of transfer tape for this one i'm going to be very careful and peel this stencil up get it down and then come back and put my letters in and then i will come back and i will add the hello so i'm going to start with summer so let's go ahead and do that now 
So first things first, I think this looks good here. I'm just trying to make sure I even it up. Another thing, whenever you go to cut this out, I actually use my 12 by 24 mat. Um, so feel free to use the smart materials if you want to, if you don't use smart materials. I definitely think the smart materials is a lot harder to use. It has a really thick backing. So I like to just use my favorites. And then um, what you wanna make sure and do when you go to cut this out, move it on the mat to where you're giving yourself around two inches all the way around. So that way I'm not gonna risk getting paint on my mat. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to very carefully flip this guy over and we are going to remove the back. All right, super careful, super slow, because if this guy caves in on itself, it's stuck. So you wanna be nice and slow, but you can see it's just a stencil. So if you had something that had a lot more intricate pieces or anything like that, you may wanna go ahead and use transfer tape at that time. But the one thing I like to do is avoid using transfer tape if I can, because number one, you're wasting a lot of material. Number two, um, it's still, it's kind of hard to get the transfer tape off then at that point too, because this is not a very sticky um, substrate to stick it onto. We're sticking this on a mat. Another thing you can use is freezer paper, and we've done a lot of tutorials using that as well. So what we're gonna do is just carefully move this around. It's really easy to kind of get this guy moved around and get it to where you wanna be. So I'm gonna kind of do something about like that, just making sure I'm not distorting anything. And then I can go back and carefully start to press this guy in. So you could take your squeegee if you want to, whatever you got. Sometimes I use like the ends of my scissors and basically we're just going to press this in. So that way when we go to paint, we're not gonna risk getting any paint underneath. All right, looks good. So now let's go ahead and come back in here and add our letters summer. So you wanna be careful, try to keep your fingers off of that stick so we don't make it unsticky. Once again, these are quite big letters so we're not gonna to have to fuss too much. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these guys in here. I just wanna be mindful trying to keep everything nice and straight so it's still going to look good. So we're gonna do that. And the next one. And so I'll go ahead and speed this up and get all of these guys down. Now here's the thing, we have summer down, it is ready to go. You could actually do this in a couple of different steps. We could go ahead and paint summer and get it out of the way and then come back and do the hello, especially if you wanna really get it closer. I'm gonna try to trim off just a little bit more and I'm gonna carefully just stick this guy down. Now, the thing to keep in mind, when we go to put this down, you may want to do like a parchment paper hack here, which is what I'm going to do to prevent it from sticking on this. Because once it sticks on this, it's over with, that's where it's going to sit. Whereas here we have a little bit of fluctuation. So I'm going to carefully remove the back from this one. Same thing as last time, we'll come back for these little pieces in a minute. Now you may notice that I've got a couple pieces sticking together, but luckily it's not anything crazy. If it was real small, it'd be harder to do this, but I'm going to be able to very carefully go in here and remove these pieces. You just wanna make sure you don't push them down too much so you can see they're letting go. I just wanna carefully go in here and try to flatten everybody back out. And there we have it. So it still looks a little bit messy, but I promise, trust the process. I'm gonna carefully flip this guy over. I'm going to get it on the rug part first, get it straightened out. All right, so I'm gonna get this as close as I can without going into my design. I'm trying to center it up. Now it may not look super pretty, but as long as you're making out like I've got my word hello, I just need to go back in now, grab those pieces that need to go back. So I can simply just use a weeding tool and that's what I'm gonna do. So once again, you can see, as long as I've got a flat surface when I go to paint and things are not gonna get wonky, you're gonna be good. So don't worry about what it looks like in a sense, as long as everything is straight. So I'm gonna go in here very carefully and get all these pieces in here until they look correct. Now this is my plan. 
We're gonna do Hello in black. We're gonna do the little popsicle sticks in black. You could definitely do them in a lighter tan. I think the color of the rug just makes it kind of almost impossible. So I'm gonna do those black, and then I'm gonna change these colors. So I'm gonna do green, pink, you know, every other color, because I'm keeping the same color theme, if you will. So I'm gonna start out with the black, because I wanna get that Hello done and out of the way, just because that adhesive vinyl came out a little bit wonky. Yours may come out completely perfect. Also, once again, you could definitely use the freezer paper, but I'm happy with it. So let's get to painting. Once again, I am using chalk paint today, but if yours is going in the rain, I don't recommend it. I highly recommend Flex Seal over anything nowadays, but you can do the uh, waterproof, like I said, um, acrylic paint. So I'm just going to get some of this on a foam brush. The important thing is doing a dabbing motion, not a sweeping. Sweeping is gonna cause it to go underneath and bleed. So you just definitely want to stick with a dabbing motion. We're just gonna go dab, dab, dab all the way around. It's really honestly that simple. Now you guys let me know in the comments below, have you guys tried making a doormat with your Cricut? If you have, what is your favorite method? Have you guys tried the Flex Seal? Um, have you guys tried doing different colors? Let me know all the things in the comments below. Now, while I'm painting this, I thought it would be a good time to let you guys know about the supplies for this on top of the acrylic paint, using adhesive vinyl or simply using um, freezer paper. You guys definitely need the mat, obviously. Now, I have purchased my mats from Walmart. I actually got these a while back for like five bucks. And when I did, I grabbed a ton of them, every single one that they had, or I simply get them from Target. I believe you can get them from like Home Depot, places like that. Um, a few other, I'm trying to think of a couple places. You guys let me know in the comments below where a good place to get these rugs from. But if your Walmart has these for five bucks, go snag them like I did. If you are into making doormats, because I like to make mine all season. So for example, summer's my favorite time, but I do make them for Christmas, Halloween, etc. So definitely grab a couple of these. These are perfect for a housewarming gift or a birthday gift, Mother's Day, etc. So perfect gift on top of everything else. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and get these while I'm at it. And then I'll actually go back and pull up my um, adhesive vinyl. I don't let this just completely dry down. Once I'm done, I just go pull it off. It's really honestly that simple. So I'm just gonna go through here and color all my popsicles. Now, another tip here is whenever I'm dabbing this, I'm making sure I'm getting everything that I can. And once again, dab, dab, dab is the biggest key I can give you. But if you miss anything when we go to pull this off, you could take a paintbrush and fill in any spots that need to be done after the fact. I've actually decided because I connected the two adhesive vinyls, I'm gonna leave the hello alone. We'll grab it all here in just a bit. So let's move on to our colors. I was gonna do lime green. I think I'm gonna do pink, green, pink, green, etc. So I'm gonna shake these guys up. If you guys have been following along here, you guys actually know I snagged these on the clearance at Hobby Lobby for $1.49 recently. Uh, so definitely make sure you always check out their clearance, but you can grab from wherever you decide. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one here. All right, so now we are ready. I'm just gonna dip right into here, just like I did a while ago. I am somebody that just dips right into the container. I'm gonna go here and just start painting these. So I'm just gonna get all of the pinks and then I'll come back and do all of the greens. And this actually feels a little bit thicker. That's probably why it's on the clearance. It's a little bit older. So I actually would go back and add a little bit of water to this, but we're just gonna proceed forward for the circumstances of already recording. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you have a two second forget. <laughs> so I started obviously going in here with that pink. So I'm hoping here in a minute, I'll kind of dab out a little bit of that, uh, maybe with some paper towel or something and then try to go over it and cover it. If it doesn't, it'll be a little bit of an ombre there on that popsicle. So I'm gonna move on to this one. Also, I love hearing your guys' boo-boo or uh-oh or mistakes. So let me know in the comments below when you guys have been crafting, what is the biggest mistake that you have made whenever it comes to, you know, your vinyl? Did you accidentally weed out the wrong pieces and lose them? Um, did you forget to mirror? Did you do something similar that I did right there with the paint? Let me know because I always love reading those down below. It is a ton of fun. All 
All right, this green's looking a little bit better than that pink did. So I'm gonna keep on going. I think I'm gonna be able to cover that pink up. I just kind of went right on top of it and it's looking pretty good. Also, in case you guys are wondering, the shirt that I'm wearing, we've actually done a tutorial on with Cricut's newer, bigger, thing, bigger print and cut features. And we did it on Glitter HTV. So this was a sublimation project. So if you guys are curious about this design or how we made this t-shirt, make sure you guys um, look in the description below because we've got it linked down there for you. Before I close those, I really wanna get all of this off to make sure I'm not gonna to have to go in and fill anything in. This is where the magic happens, the big reveal. So I'm gonna carefully peel all of this stuff off, keep it in one little bunch here so I don't get it all in my craft space, and then we'll go back in with our tweezers here, craft tweezers, to pull out all of those pieces, like the letters and all the little pieces. So well, here we go. So we're just going to keep it up and out of the way. Get it all out just like that. And look at this thing coming together. Let me get this guy out of the way and we're gonna come back and get the small ones. Taking a scrap piece of paper here, you could stick it on the adhesive itself if you can. I'm gonna get this over to the side, use my tweezers, and carefully go in here and lift all of these pieces out. So just one at a time. Once again, if you are somebody that's a little bit more OCD where you want super clean lines, come back in with a paintbrush, very fine detail, and clean all of that up. So there's always a way to get this 100% perfect if need be. You can also come in with a paintbrush too and go around an outline here around um, these popsicles if that's something you wanna do too, just to get them to pop even further. I am so excited, you guys. This came out amazing. The colors look so good on this rug. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. Is this something that you guys are gonna be recreating or maybe doing something similar? Have you guys tried painting on the rugs with color or do you simply just stick with the black? I love it. I can't wait to see our porch come together. Going back to project number one, I have already painted this white as you guys can see. So let's go ahead and put it together. So you guys can see this adorable sign here. Now there is several to choose from here. This is just one of the fun ones. And so I'm gonna go ahead and piece this guy together. I've already got all of our adhesive vinyl cut out. I'll have you guys link down below. I'm actually using a mixture between StarCraft and Oracle 631. If you guys did not know, Oracle 631 is the matte version of their um, it's Oracle 651 which is glossy. So it is considered a removable. Removable is permanent over time. So just know that. So we're just gonna go ahead and proceed forward. Let's go ahead and start with that hello. I'm gonna get my hello in place and then we can work with everything around it. First things first, we've got our adhesive vinyl. I've got some transfer tape here. I get questions all the time about this one. So I'll have you guys linked below. So we are gonna start off with this one. And I should be able to trim this down and use it a couple times. You guys can see a little piece is hanging out there and that's totally okay. It's still enough to get me to pick it all up. And once again, I'll be able to cut this guy down and use it multiple times. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna use our new squeegee. If you guys have not seen our new tutorial on the Timu haul, we did some craft supplies and this is one of them and it's awesome. So we're gonna get this guy picked up here really quick. Here we go. Flip it over and peel. Perfect. Now I'm trying to make sure I'm leaving myself enough room to get the leaves and all of those things down as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball this. I'm thinking somewhere right about here. It looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these pieces down. We're gonna squeegee them in there. Perfect. Take this out of corner and peel. Perfect. So I think what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy in there really quick. We'll scoot this up and out. I'm trying to work with all of my big pieces first so that way, if you can, sometimes you can't depending on the design, that way I um, can continue to keep my transfer tape big. All right, so we're going to flip this over. And then before I fully commit, I'm gonna go ahead and grab those legs and attach those on here, just so I know exactly where I'm going. Okay, 
All right, so we're gonna peel that. Now I'm ready. So moving in here, I'm just watching right here. I can see where this is going to go. This is like the offset, if you will. It's gonna allow me to see right where this body needs to go. Take that squeegee again and rub it in. Get us a corner and peel. All right. I'm gonna go into my next piece here, which is this pink one, this little, what would you call that, the arm? We're gonna go in there, the wing, if you will. We're gonna grab it, and I can probably start to trim this down here in just a bit. I just wanna be safe first and use it as much as I need to while it's still long. Okay, so this is the same thing. We're just paying attention to the offset. These should nestle in there nicely so you can see where all these pieces are gonna go. I need to watch for that little piece there. I think I'm off just a smidge where I put my hello and I'm all right with it. Really, honestly, that should have came down here just a bit. So it probably would have been more wise to maybe start with my flamingo first, but that's okay. All right, going back up here. And carefully pill. There we go. See, and I like working with the chalk paint too because it dries quicker. I feel like the adhesive vinyl does stick to it a lot better in my opinion. Next up, let's go ahead and pick up, and I think I'm gonna be able to trim this guy down. I don't think I need it to stay that big anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and trim this guy down so I'm not lugging around this big old piece. We're gonna set it aside. And we're gonna pick up this piece first. You just always make sure you're laying down in the correct layer so you can always double check yourself first. I love how this is an offset and everything just nestles down where it needs to be. Before I commit this piece, we're gonna go back here and I'm going to carefully attach my nose piece. I'm not even gonna use a piece of adhesive transfer tape there. I'm gonna get this right underneath. Be placed down by hand. I didn't even have to use the transfer tape. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this piece down really quickly. All right, just like that. Now I had cut out the whites for the eyes and obviously we don't need that because of the offset. You can see the white of the background. Usually I catch that, but I didn't. That looks so, so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep laying these pieces. The last few pieces we have are these leaves. So I'm just gonna go in here and figure out where these go. I did not weld these together. I let them cut individual. So I just need to make sure that I'm placing them where they need to go. And these here, Whenever it comes to bigger items like this, you definitely don't have to have transfer tape. I'm just going to carefully line these up with my sides. So right here, and just slowly place them down. Absolutely perfect, super duper easy to put together. You don't have to put a bow, but I'm going to. I just simply use my Bow Dabra. If you guys don't know what that is, I'll have a link down below. There's, you can get them on Amazon, your local craft store. It just makes these bows so easy. You could make these by hand, honestly, even with a little zip tie. So it's just basically going back and forth, back and forth. You're gonna cinch the middle and then you're gonna poof them out. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and get this guy down right about here and it's just gonna completely tie that off. So with this one, we're just going to hot glue it down. Also, we have a tutorial where we've made it where you could do interchangeable bows using a magnet. We've also did interchangeable wreaths as well, so make sure you guys check that video out as well. I'm gonna get that right about there, and I'm just gonna hold this guy down until it's holding on. Oh my goodness, I can already see this porch coming together. It is going to be amazing. I think the colors are gonna work very well together. You guys let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think about this door wreath? Are you guys going to be recreating this one? Maybe you're just gonna do the doormat. Maybe you're just gonna do the door wreath, or maybe you're gonna have your porch just like mine this summer, which I would love. And if you guys do, make sure you guys are sharing your photos and tagging us in them so we can check them out. So like I said, you guys let me know in the comments below if you guys like it. Last project, here we go. We're gonna make a welcome sign. You guys know we gotta have a welcome sign. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I cheat the system sometimes. If this is gonna cost me way cheaper than it's going to cost me going to buy a welcome sign, this is a shelf. 
So if you go to Lowe's, you can actually get these already finished out. I love them. You could definitely remove your vinyl later on, do something different, but they're already painted for me. But if you wanna do it on a budget, you could go down, you could grab signs from Hobby Lobby and things like that during their 50% 40% off of their wooden signs. You could definitely go get wood that is unfinished and have it cut down, or you could cut it down yourself as well. Lots of options. But honestly, these are those Rubbermaid shelves that you can snag, and sometimes you can get them pretty affordable. And I like it, it's a sign. So I'm gonna get this guy up here and we're gonna get ready to make it. I'm gonna be using this bundle right here and out of here I'm gonna create this sign right here, love it. I think the colors, I've changed them up a little bit just to keep all the colors together. I've already cut all of my adhesive vinyl out once again. I sized this out. I was actually able to cut this between using my 12 by 12 mat, my 12 by 24. Once again, if you were using smart materials, you could definitely get away with just using the really big long cuts too. But when it comes to a long sign like this, don't think that you need to cut 12 by 36 because it's in increments because each piece is separate colors. So really my, honestly, my biggest piece is like this, right? Cause the color of everything. And I didn't even have it welded. So for example, this just cut out on the same page because the word summer. So thanks Scott um together now i don't actually think i did use my 12 by 12 by 24 because i got all my projects out at one time so i had all three of my designs inside of cricut design space sized out color coordinated and cut them out so honestly i don't think i used a 12 by 24 mat for this it was the 12 by 12s but see what i mean the biggest design is here this is actually a piece that's going to go up here and this piece it just cut together because they're the same color does that make sense all right so i'm going to go ahead and first sort, sort this out and we're going to get ready to put it together First things first, I'm going to start by putting this down here at the bottom. I wanna make sure I really center this guy up. I could have stretched this guy out to where my grass went from side to side. I did not, but you could completely do that if you want to. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have this guy completely centered. I was gonna see if I had enough to cover this and I think it's gonna be good enough. So that piece that we had left that we cut off a while ago, I'm gonna carefully Get it down here and it's just going to be hanging off my signs so i'm just going to squeeze this guy on and get ready to put it down all right flipping it over so i'm just going to like i said start from the bottom and work my way to the top if you need to place all your pieces down first get a visual because sometimes we can start at the bottom and we end up having too much of a gap at the top which i may so don't judge me if i do um so you may really want to lay those out make sure you got them right where you want them now, if you guys have not seen the parchment paper hack, you're about to learn something new. The way to not commit to something just yet is by using a piece of parchment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this guy on here somewhere like this, and I'm just gonna get it down here at the bottom to where I can see. So I've left a little bit at the top, so I'm gonna be able to lay it down. So I'm just gonna make sure from side to side, everything looks even. Once I'm ready, I'm just going to commit. I've got the parchment paper, which allows me not to overcommit just yet. I've got the top piece down. We're gonna lift this guy up and then we'll slowly smooth it out. If you guys have not tried the parchment paper hack, you have to when it comes to making signs, it's going to save your life. It's gonna allow you not to overcommit because <laughs> I've done it one too many times. All right, so you just wanna make sure that you have everything squeegeed in. We're going to fill it up and then we're just gonna move on to the next. So my next piece here is gonna be my boots and it's gonna interlay those pink pieces like so. So I'm just gonna go in here and grab this. So as you can see, I really try to save as much of my transfer tape as I can. That's where your cost can kind of go up by wasting so much, but you can reuse the transfer over and over again. So always use it until you just can't. All right, so this same thing I'm going to, I don't need the parchment paper hack on this one, I don't feel, because I'm just going to be lining everything up my biggest thing is trying to make sure that i'm staying straight staying in line because with something like this it's really easy to get wonky so i'm hoping i can keep myself from doing that so i'm just going to smooth these guys down all right perfect and then i'm going to find my next piece for our next piece i believe it's going to be his beard i technically don't need a transfer tape for this but i'm going to go ahead and do it just to be safe so I'm gonna go ahead, but it's such a big piece, I honestly could just do this by hand. So we're gonna do this, flip it over. I got a little piece hanging out and that's okay. For the beard, because my sign is already white, I didn't do the white as what was showing in the photo. I did this off 
it's like an off-white, almost like a tan. I just thought it would be really cute, but you could do a gray, you could do a black beard. Um, you could do a glitter beard if you want to. Do whatever your heart desires. I'm just gonna get this on here, hoping that, once again, I'm staying straight on this. Get us down and rubbed in. Next up we have his nose. We actually have his watermelon piece that's gonna go in here, but we'll come back to that. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get his nose. All right. Pick that guy up. And then we just want to center that up just like so. Squeeze it down and build. For our next piece, we're gonna start working into our hat. This is where I really need to be careful, make sure I'm not getting wonky and crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to use that same transfer tape. And as you're going along, you may notice it start to curl up and all that. And if you guys aren't new here, I'm sorry whenever I probably say things over and over, but we do have a lot of newbies coming in and out or people that's coming to learn. And so that's why I always make sure I mention those things. All right, so we're gonna go in. So if you're here for inspiration, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you guys have been inspired. All right, so we are gonna carefully, this is that thing I was talking about being careful on this one because um, I don't want to get wonky. So we may want to use a parchment if you feel like you need to. I think I'm okay. I think I did it. I probably should have got a little bit closer with that there, but that's all right. Let's kill it. And there were so many cute designs when it came to this door here. So I'm gonna do that, and then we're gonna come in with our pink. So I'm gonna try to layer these in those pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in with that pink and then keep on going. All right, Get our pink pieces here. We're gonna peel. And then I'm just gonna try to keep these guys lined up without getting crazy. See how like I got off there just a little bit? So I was gonna try to yank myself back and see if I could fix it. And it appears that I did, so that looks great. I love this color combo too, it's so precious. All right, there we go. And let's go back in with our next. I'm a, I'm a, this is like a, I don't know what color, what color green do you call this? I can't think, but it's it's between like a lemon green. Um, you guys let me know in the comments below. You guys are probably a better judge of what green this is. But the problem was I didn't have two of the same green of a color that I actually wanted to use. So I decided to go with this one and I, I'm really happy with the way that it's coming out with these colors. Okay, so here we go. Perfect. See what I mean? You gotta be careful because you can see how the hat's going this way. And so you gotta be careful not to think, okay, I've gotta get over there because the hat is wonky the way that it is, this design. It's very whimsical, if you will. All right, go back in, grab our next one. All right, here we go. And peel. All there we have it. Just being nice and slow and patient. Get that down. Perfect. I'm gonna grab these first. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and grab the top of my hat, my butterflies. I decided to change those to purple, and I just kept the, I'd already welded those pieces together, so I decided to keep the top of my hat purple, and honestly, I'm digging it. I like the way it came out. That's where on my popsicle, I was gonna do a purple in there as well, but I couldn't, I didn't have a purple paint on hand. So there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back and put these other butterflies where they go. Such a good color combo, like I said. I'm actually really in love with this. So now we're gonna come in. I'm gonna go ahead and put down that sweet summer really fast and then we'll come back and work on that watermelon. Before I do, I'm actually gonna go in here and pick up sweet summer. I'm gonna try to pick them up together so I can get them to go down at the same time. So I've got my summer. and we've got our sweet. So we're just gonna peel this last one, and then I'm going to get this down. But I'm gonna do the same thing with that parchment paper hack, just to be safe. So I'm gonna get it right about here. 
and then get some of this clear out here just so I can visually see what's happening. And then I'm going to try and center this up and just kind of get it as straight as possible. So something right about there looks good. So when I'm happy, I can just kind of commit like I did before. Peel this up and then slowly work these pieces down and squeegee. Perfect. So now let's work on that precious watermelon. We are almost done here, guys. So we're going to pick up the bottom of our watermelon really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get it somewhere right about here, just working on the bottom base first. You could definitely pick these guys up. You At that point, you would start with your pink layer first and then get your rind and then the black piece. That way you can lay it all down at one time, but I'm just gonna work like this. All right, we're gonna grab our pink piece. All right, got it. Perfect. Put that down and peel. And then we'll go in for that watermelon rind. Ugh, this is so cute, I cannot wait. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Perfect. We're gonna carefully get that guy down and feel. Now all we simply have left is his little hands and this sign is complete. So we're just gonna go right in here at the bottom. Right about there looks good to me. Get those little paws down. And there you have it. Now let me get this up here so we can check it out. Oh my gosh, what do you guys think? It is so adorable. I think the color combo is so, so sweet. Once again, I used the same colors on the sign and then I tried to blend in and use some similar colors on my doormat so everything can blend cohesively. So keep that in mind when you guys do these. But even if you just wanted to create the welcome sign, you guys could definitely do that. But I really love that color combo. You guys let me know. It's so hard to try to get the whole thing in frame. You guys let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Now let's go ahead and head on outside so we can put it together. So now we just simply gotta put all these pieces in place. So get the doormat down, and then simply we're gonna go ahead and hang up our door wreath. And then we're just gonna prop our welcome sign up right over here. And this is the final results. You guys let me know your thoughts. I think it's an adorable. And all you simply have to do is just add another plant or this or that, a chair maybe. Those little things just help tie everything together. And as you guys could see, we were able to do this all with our Cricut. And there you guys have it. That was so much fun making over my front porch using my Cricut. I had a ton of fun. I hope I have inspired you guys, whether you guys use these designs or some other designs that we have. There's so many to offer. You could decorate with the 4th of July. You guys could definitely do this all summer long with so many different themes. So you guys let me know out of all of these, which one was your favorite? And if you're going to be recreating, like I said, thank you guys for hanging out with us and joining. If you guys are not new, make sure you guys consider hitting that notification bell down below as well as that subscribe button so you guys don't miss a thing.